Well, let's take a look at that uh, auction that took place on Wednesday specifically. Uh, it uh, certainly in, uh, saw the appeal where we had Nigeria raising 93 billion naira. Uh, and that in a three, five, and ten-year sovereign bond uh, issuances. You know, uh, what did you make of that kind of activity that came to the fore? Well, um, given that the inflation data had come out just before, and it was quite positive with the inflation dropping to nine point four, um, it was a bit of a surprise in some quarters that the yield seemed to rise. Uh, the three-year yield, in particular, came out at about thirty basis points higher than the secondary market trading levels before the auction. Um, I think that is a factor of many things. The bid to cover ratio for the auction as a whole was uh, about 1.9 times. Uh, particularly for the three-year bond, the bid to cover was 1.5 times, which is the lowest it's been all year. And this is a function of the fact that the central bank is becoming a little more proactive in matching its monetary uh, policy direction with its open market operations and interventions. On the day of the auction or the day before, the central bank actually took out a hundred billion naira for 14 days as an open as part of its open market interventions, which meant liquidity was a little tight as at the time of the auction, tighter than is usually the case because the auction is timed to coincide with the payment of uh, federal allocation committee flows. So that meant that things were tighter this time and the rates came out a bit higher than expected as a result. Also, the central bank governor's comments about the continued focus on tightening, yeah. despite the apparent drop in inflation, played a role. Um, I think food inflation seems to be the driver of the drop in the year-on-year -year inflation figure. And the central bank continues to be hawkish on the core inflation. And that message is uh, coming across to the markets. Of course, with, the, with that information that was released to the markets yesterday, I mean, to what extent does it indicate that uh, investors are still anticipating inflation will rise further moving forward despite the bank becoming hawkish? Well, first, I think investors are taking their cue from the central bank itself, who continues to strike fairly hawkish tone. Um, you have a new finance minister also sworn in, who is talking about some uh, fiscal consolidation, which should help in the long run. Um, the sense is nobody is quite sure that the inflation is sustainable at single-digit levels yet. Um, nobody is quite sure that the factors are in place to ensure that we stay at single digits. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is the year-on-year -year measure itself is volatile by its very nature, and you can't get the odd outlier. So uh, despite the drop in inflation, people still think there might be further tightening. People still believe the central bank is focused on positive real interest rates and are now taking the market's actions to kind of bring that about. As a result, people were a little more bearish than might have been anticipated. Also, let's not forget the bond yields have actually come off a fair bit in the past two months. Bonds have rallied in the past two months. And if you look at it over a six-month timeline, uh, bond yields are actually fairly low at the mm -hmm. moment already, despite the hike at uh, Wednesday's auction. So overall, it's, it, it, hasn't, it's, it's, it seems not to have reacted to the positive inflation news. But if you look at it over the year, yields are actually lower, which is broadly in line with the inflationary trend we've seen. When it the comes market to just isn't... Yeah. Sorry, Akin, but when yeah, it comes go. to who's actually playing in this market, is there a distinction to be made between local and foreign investors, especially after the central bank relaxed a rule that uh, foreign investors in Nigerian bonds must hold their positions for at least a year? Yeah, well, um, that did change things a bit initially. But because of the global crisis uh, that coincided with the change in this rule, and also because the, low, the market interest rates themselves were quite low. The foreign investor interest that was anticipated has not materialized. Uh, initially, there was a rush. But very, very quickly, we saw things peter out very quickly. And frankly, we've seen some of the offshore investors actually leave. Mm -hmm. So the composition of the, part, of the participants in the bond market has not changed significantly. It is still dominated by the banks and, to a lesser extent, the pension funds. The foreign portfolio investors aren't a significant factor at this point 
yet. Where we've touched on the federal government's bonds, uh, what, what, how exactly is the market embracing some of the AMCON bonds uh, which were issued to recapitalize the banks in exchange for uh, non-performing loans because uh, it was supposed to have been equivalent to uh, federal government bonds but there seems to be uh, you know, a, a missing element there, not as much attraction to AMCON bonds at this stage. Well, there are a number of reasons for that. Um, and there is some activity, I must say this up front, there is some activity in the AMCOM bonds on the secondary market, but not very much. The reasons are, well, there are quite a few of them. First of all, the bonds were issued effectively inside the corresponding federal government bond yields. In short, the AMCOM bonds were issued at a discount to the sovereign. They are sovereign debt, sovereign risk anyway, but they were issued at a lower yield than the three-year equivalent government bond at the time. Now, that was never likely to be a sustainable state of affairs in terms of the secondary market because uh, there is no, while you can argue that AMCON can rank pari passu with the federal government bond, uh, the fact is it's difficult to make the case that it should be trading lower in yield terms on the federal government bond. So that means that anybody who is holding the bond who was issued the bond originally as part of the exchange scheme, to sell on the secondary market would have to yeah. take a loss. Not many people are willing to do that, especially as they can repo the bond uh, fully with the central bank. So that was a break on secondary market liquidity. Well, Another factor, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, again, we've uh, run out of time, so we're going to have to leave that conversation there uh, for this afternoon. But a pleasure chatting to you uh, today. Uh, Ken Dawadu is a treasurer over at City Nigeria.